It's a brief question that causes great headaches. Are we alone in the universe? Given the gigantic dimensions of the cosmos and the abundance of celestial bodies, is it even possible that Earth is the only planet that harbors life? Although researchers have not yet proven the existence of extraterrestrial life, this does not mean, in the reverse conclusion, that it's categorically excluded. On the contrary, quite a few researchers are firmly convinced that extraterrestrial civilizations are slumbering somewhere out there. However, this exciting assumption also raises new questions, reflected in the well-known Fermi paradox. What explanations exist regarding this exciting train of thought and how we might rather be careful what we wish for, you'll see in today's video. Excited about the biggest astronomical mysteries of our time? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click on the bell to join us on our cosmic quest from now on. Show us with a thumbs up that you like our excursions into the exciting field of space mysteries. The Fermi Paradox the year is 1950, when Italian physicist Enrico Fermi publishes a train of thought that has made waves to this day. The researcher assumed that extraterrestrial life exists, and this not merely in the form of simple microorganisms, but as highly developed civilizations. In view of the fact that the extraterrestrial peoples are able to maintain their technical achievements over millions of years, they should actually have the means to spread over the entire Milky Way. And actually, probability says that this should have happened already long ago. Therefore, it seemed all the more strange to Fermi that the search for extraterrestrial life had not yielded any results, a circumstance that, as is well known, was not to change in the following decades. In detail, the Italian rejected the rare earth hypothesis. He did not believe, therefore, that the evolution of terrestrial life embodied an extraordinary, let alone unique, process. Taking into account the age of the universe and its great abundance of stars, exoplanets had not yet been discovered at that time. Fermi concluded that even a single extraterrestrial civilization in the Milky Way would have to be capable of completely colonizing our entire home galaxy within a few million years. Since our galactic homeland is, however, clearly older than the 20 to 40 million years estimated for it, innumerable extraterrestrial peoples would have had to have already spread in our cosmic neighborhood. The problem? In spite of all observations and contact attempts undertaken on our part, there is still no trace of extraterrestrial cultures. With this previous knowledge, the Fermi paradox can be summarized as follows. If extraterrestrial life forms exist, why aren't they here? To this end, let's take a look at some explanatory approaches that attempt to decipher this apparent contradiction. Distances and distribution patterns. Before we delve deeper into the field of explanatory theories, we should consider a fundamental fact that complicates the study of this exciting topic from the outset. One of Fermi's fundamental views is based on the assumption that all extraterrestrial civilizations develop in a similar way. However, purely objectively, we can make no statements at all about the motives or development processes of possible extraterrestrials. The question, whether we should really lump our theoretical neighboring cultures together in one cosmic group, has repeatedly become the center of heated debates. But now back to our actual topic. The first theory, which deals with the Fermi paradox, makes a further discussion invalid from the beginning. According to this theory, we would be really alone in the universe. The blossoming of terrestrial life was nothing more than a sequence of unique coincidences. Another approach does not exclude the existence of extraterrestrial life forms, but sees the problem in the implementation of interstellar colonization. Thus, Several highly developed cultures could exist in our native Milky Way. However, these are not able to exert a mutual influence due to their spatial distances to each other. We need only look at the distance gaping between us and the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, to reach the glittering celestial body and its planetary companions. A distance of 4.2 light years would have to be bridged. Without the propulsion technologies of the near future, the passage would take a full 6,300 years. The remaining nearest exoplanets considered potentially habitable are as far away as 39 light years from us. However, 
even in the case where our unknown neighbors have the necessary ways and means to colonize their immediate neighboring systems, there would be no uniform colonization of the Milky Way. Instead of an area-wide distribution, we would rather have to deal with bubble-shaped agglomerations, which are limited by a marked catchment area. Self-Destruction and Zoo Hypothesis If the views of experts such as Stephen Hawking are anything to go by, the technical development of a civilization is always accompanied by a huge snag. It inevitably results in the self-destruction of the community concerned. In this regard, the genius who died in 2018 listed various, sometimes unintended factors that could bring about the end of a culture. In addition to genetically modified pathogens, these include galloping greenhouse effects. Here, Venus might well be a culprit, as well as nuclear wars. Unfortunately, our own species is no exception. According to Hawking, to avert our own demise, it's essential to colonize extraterrestrial celestial bodies. But perhaps the extraterrestrial civilizations also took to heart a principle that we humans are only too happy to ignore. Some experts are throwing their hands up in horror at the attempts we have made to make contact. If the information about our species and Earth that we send into space aboard space probes were to fall into the hands of an aggressive civilization, it could form the basis of a large-scale invasion attack. The remaining aliens, fearful of such a scenario, might therefore do their utmost to remain undetected for as long as possible. In reference to our terrestrial animal parks, this train of thought is also called the zoo hypothesis. Each species lives in its own staked-out enclosure and does not interfere with the concerns of others. Yet our undiscovered neighbors may have camouflaged technologies that we can't even imagine at the moment. Simulation Hypothesis Another extremely controversial line of thought is based on the assumption that we cannot detect our extraterrestrial contemporaries because our entire reality is nothing but a big lie. According to this hypothesis, we are all in a simulation set in motion by a mysterious force. But how should a civilization succeed in bringing such a matrix scenario into reality? One possibility would be to build a Matryoshka brain. Such a megastructure would be based on a gigantic network of Dyson spheres, the hypothetical constructs capable of fully harnessing the energy of a full-grown star, like the eponymous Russian dolls nested inside of each other. A Dyson sphere would absorb the energy heat of the one below it and provide its own waste heat to the one next to it. As unimaginable as this hypothesis may seem at first, it does not contradict any physical law we know of. The Filter Problem Assuming that the evolution of life in the cosmos is nothing unusual, does this mean that the same is true for the unfolding of higher intelligence? Some experts answer this question with a firm no. According to this, a civilization would first have to overcome some major barriers on the way to its technical peak. This filter has several different components that unfortunately offer a lot of potential for failure. Let's just take a look at the path that terrestrial life has taken so far. Starting from the favorable position of our planet within the habitable zone, over the emergence of the simplest unicellular organisms, up to life forms that send their own members and artificial objects into space. It's been a long journey. In this respect, it's conceivable that other life forms fail at an intermediate step of the Great Filter and die out before they are able to colonize other star systems. Deadly Probes Theory when it comes to peaceful understanding between nations, we humans are truly not the best example. According to this theory, the expansion and power-grabbing efforts of individual nations have claimed and continue to claim countless lives. The so-called berserker or deadly probes theory is based on the conviction that other civilizations also carry something of the dark side of humanity within them. It is hypothesized that highly developed species would send artificial missiles into space to destroy other peoples. In doing so, the targeted destruction strikes would be applied to eradicate potential competitors or opponents. A variation of this thought process is that the deployed death probes 
will get out of control and ultimately wipe out their creators as well. The last two explanations in today's video sound much less martial, but much more reassuring. According to them, the central question, if they exist, why aren't they here, could be answered with, because they're not interested in us. Even if a species is potentially capable of interstellar contact, that does not mean it recognizes it as a worthwhile target. It's also possible that the Fermi paradox is simply a case of bad timing. That means that we as mankind belong to the first highly developed species of the universe. The curse of the first hour, therefore, consists in the fact that the other civilizations are at most as far developed as we are. And as long as we ourselves are not capable of interstellar space travel, our unknown neighbors will also remain invisible. And now we want your opinion. What do you think about the different explanations of the Fermi paradox? Which theory seems to be the most plausible in your opinion? We are already curious about your comments. Want to see more exciting videos about the biggest mysteries of the cosmos? Then take a look at the other contributions of our channel, which we have linked here in the credits for you. Thanks for your interest. Take care, and we'll see you next time.